What's up, Bulls fans? No Zach Levine, no problem. The Chicago Bulls blow out the Memphis Grizzlies 125 to 96 in a game where they played like a team. They had good ball movement, got out on a fast break, and definitely put their foot on the throat of the Memphis Grizzlies, who are missing most of their stars. We're going to talk about all that right after the intro. Give me the hot sauce, Bob. Welcome to the Let's Talk Bulls podcast, your number one Bulls podcast in Chicago. What is up? Welcome back to Let's Talk Bulls, your number one Bulls podcast in Chicago. My name's Quentin. I'm your host. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Hit that subscribe button so you join the family and hit that bell notification so you're notified when I drop more of these videos. And with that, let's get right into it. The Chicago Bulls played a great game. The Memphis Grizzlies did not have most of their stars. No Derrick Rose, no John Morant, no Brown. And Steven Adams was even out. They just were missing everyone, right? And when you have a team like that, the goal here is you know they're probably not going to have the best game, but you got to put your foot on the gas, and you can't let them make it a trap game. And the Bulls did exactly that. They played the way they're supposed to play and did the things they need to do. So when you look at the game, it started out with Kobe White with a great pass to Patrick Williams to get the game really starting after both teams were kind of filling it out. And this is what happened this game. The Bulls looked like, without Zach Levine, they knew they didn't have that score, and they had to make up by playing team basketball, passing the ball, getting to the open shooters. And when the Bulls are knocking down threes, they are a scary team. And that begs the question, if the Bulls were to trade Zach and get, like, a Duncan Robinson or a Klay Thompson type of shooter who can shoot from anywhere, it would be scary, right? Because when you have a player like that who can stretch the floor and you have to defend him, you got to— Beak, beak and contender. You got to know, right? We even saw Dalen Terry with a step back three doing his thing. Everyone who got into this game did something, and that's what you like to see. The Bulls were hitting from the three-point line to start the first half. Alice Caruso, Dalen Terry, Kobe White, Patrick Williams, everyone was getting a chance, and they even saw a little bit of Drummond using his strength, Vooch using his strength. They were doing good passing the ball. Now, when we got into the second quarter, towards the third quarter, the Bulls started to really miss their big men, right? They stopped passing in. They were kind of on the perimeter, taking those type of shots. Even though they were going in, the Bulls have to focus on looking at the mismatch. I know when you're shooting great, the first thought is to pass it out. But you also have to get used to really putting your points easily, right? If Vooch is in the post with someone who's 6'4 guarding him, you got to pass on the ball. Now, the Bulls are learning to play defense. They're getting out on defense. They're getting out on the fast break. We saw Patrick Williams super active this game and being aggressive on the defensive end, which helped this team really turn over the Memphis Grizzlies and get downhill. But with that, the Bulls have to do better at not only playing good defense, but learning how, like I said, to play better in the half court and learn your mismatches. Right now, that takes me to the second half. The second half, the Memphis Grizzlies fought their way back a little bit. As you know with the Bulls, the Bulls cannot keep a lead for super long. At halftime, they have to make adjustments, and they tend to make mistakes at first. But the thing I love to see this game is the Bulls let the Memphis Grizzlies back into the game and then immediately stepped back on the gas and took over. And from then on out, it was the Bulls destroying the Memphis Grizzlies. The shots were going down. They were playing great. They play right here. Joe Kim Noah even said he thought that Alex Caruso reminded him of Kirk Heinrich, which you love to hear on the night like tonight when you had Derrick Rose and Joe Kim Noah in the game together. And Kobe White with an amazing dunk. Once the third quarter happened, the Bulls started to take over. They were playing amazing basketball, getting the ball moving, getting to the rim. Darmar DeRozan little one dribble pull up amazing and then you look at when they got into the fourth quarter right because right now the bulls are playing good they're starting to put their foot on the gas but the most important part of this game for me is when you got into the fourth quarter the bulls got even worse to the memphis grizzlies they started to not care even more and that's when they really started to see their big men right they really started to look for Andre Drummond in the fourth quarter, and you're going to see that in a second. But, I mean, after a game like this, you got to love seeing an overall team win. Fourth quarter, what happened? The Bulls started going on a dunk rampage. It started out here with Alex Caruso going up for the jam. People really forget how athletic Alex Caruso is when it comes to getting out on the fast break. Kobe, oh, 
little jelly roll layup to the rim. The Bulls attacked the rim this, this quarter. Andre Drummond ate, and that's because DeMar DeRozan was looking for Andre Drummond throughout the fourth quarter. I don't know why we didn't do this the whole start of the game, and that's what I mean. This is what you want to see from the Bulls the entire game. They constantly attacked the rim over and over and over again. They didn't rely on shooting because they knew they could get to the rim whenever they wanted, and they used that. They moved off the ball. They cut to the basket, and the people who saw the cuts rewarded the cutter with a good pass. Patrick Williams still playing great. You got to love it. This is the type of Bulls team, as a Bulls fan, you love to see. In a night where you come into the United Center, you know the Bulls are close to getting the 500, and you want them to play a team who doesn't have their stars and make sure that they win in a must-win game, to see them step up and do the job they have to do with something that you got to love. And that's something that the Bulls have to continue to do. Right now, they are a playoff team. If they want to continue to be playoff, a playoff team, they have to stay playing this way. And that leads to the question, is this something because Zach Levine is out that we're doing? Or is it just the lucky break of the Chicago Bulls playing the Memphis Grizzlies with no stars? Right? I, for one, am a person who thinks Zach has been playing really well since he's come back. I think what it looks like, though, is the team does play a little bit more passing team play ball when Zach's not out because they're trying to make up for what Zach can do. When Zach's on the floor, you don't have to do as much because he can score 30 by himself. So the games are going to be different depending on the players you have on the court. But without Zach, the Bulls do look like they focus on passing the ball and getting to the open man. And with that, what we're going to talk about is we're just going to talk a little bit about the Chicago Bulls stats, right? Who played well, who did the best things in the game. And with First person I want to start talking about is off the bench, Ayo Desumu. Ayo Desumu comes off the bench and is your leading scorer. 20 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, 7 for 10 from the field, 3 for 3 from the free throw line, 3 for 5 from the three-point line, had himself an efficient game where he played good, he did the things he was supposed to do, and he just played the type of game you want to see a bench player play. This was a game where we didn't need the starters to do much, and Ayo took the aggressive state of the people who are on the floor cannot guard me and he went after it and that's what I love to see Andre Drummond 15 points 10 rebounds off the bench D Dalen Terry 7 points 5 rebounds 3 assists Javon Carter 12 points 5 assists the bench played well and that goes to the starters who also played well Alex Caruso 8 points 3 rebounds 1 assist Vooch 11 points 11 rebounds honestly I think he could have had more we did not pass him the ball a lot in that second and third quarter we just weren't looking for him in the post the Bulls had trouble doing that for the second and third quarter they started to fix it in the fourth um but I think if we pass Vooch the ball more in the paint he gets more points Patrick Williams 15 points four rebounds four for 11 four for four from the free throw line I love seeing Patrick get to the free throw line he's too strong get yourself to the free throw line get some easy baskets Kobe White 17 points five rebounds five assists had a good game. We didn't need Kobe to be a 27-point scorer tonight, and he didn't have to. He played the game right. He got his teammates involved. He got rebounds. He got points. DeMar DeRozan, 18 points, 4 rebounds, 8 assists. I do think he took too many shots, 7 for 20, but hey, that's what comes with DeMar. So with that, what you want to look at is the Bulls played good. They played good team basketball, but they have to start understanding mismatches. When you're shooting well and it's going in, that's great. But when it comes down to wanting to be a star team, when it comes to playoffs, being a contender, in the playoffs, there are nights when you can't shoot. When you play a team six times, right, in a row, they're going to learn how to stop you from shooting. And if you can't shoot, you got to find another way. So the Bulls, if they want to continue to be a better team, have to learn how to find the mismatch. If Vooch has a 6-4 guard on him, pass on the ball. Right now, that brings me to the question of the day. Do you think the Bulls play like this because Zach was out? Or do you think the Bulls play like this because they played Memphis and Memphis didn't have any stars 
to really hold the bulls back what is your thoughts leave it down in the comment section and once again make sure you like the video subscribe i'm on my way to a thousand subscribers i am the number one bulls podcast in chicago and i'm one of the number one bulls podcast on youtube no one's bringing you content like this we're becoming the espn of the youtube page so if you're liking the content make sure you subscribe so you can be a part of this family in this revolution of a new youtube channel so hope you guys have a great night hope you enjoyed the video i'll see y'all next time i might make another video today just on my thoughts on the bulls young core and what's gonna happen with dalen terry and how he's been improving but with that peace y'all